Hey robot makers, have you heard about the latest release of Raspberry Pi Buster? Then keep watching. So Raspberry Pi have just announced the latest version of the Raspberry Pi operating system and they've just made a major change to how this works. The Pi user will no longer be created as the default user. So up till now, all installations of Raspberry Pi OS have had the default user that's called Pi. This wasn't so much of a weakness, just knowing a valid username doesn't really help if somebody wants to hack into your system. They would also need to know your password and you would need to enable some form of remote access in the first place. But nonetheless, it could potentially make a brute force attack slightly easier. And in response to this, some countries are now introducing legislation to forbid any internet enabled device from having default login credentials. So why the change? So this is all about cyber security. So this is a quote from the Raspberry Pi organization. One of the things we spend a lot of time thinking about here at Raspberry Pi is security. Cyber attacks and hacking are sadly constantly on the increase and Raspberry Pi computers are as much a target as any other, just because there are so many out there nowadays. So there's a new wizard and it's no longer optional. So the setup wizard has always been optional. You could always press cancel to dismiss this. That's now not the case. So from now on, it's no longer optional. You will need to create a new user account when you're setting up your Raspberry Pi. In a headless setup, you can use the Raspberry Pi Imager tool. To set up a new user account, click the cogwheel to access these advanced options. There is also a mechanism to pre-configure an image without using the imager. To set up a user on first boot and bypass the wizard completely, create a file called userconf or userconf.txt in the boot partition on the SD card. This is part of the SD card, which can then be mounted in a Windows or Mac OS computer. So what about existing installations? Luckily, they've created a tool for this as well. You can rename the Pi user on an existing image. As part of this update, there's a mechanism to do this. So after you've run the update, all you need to do is log into the Pi as usual, open up a terminal, and then simply type sudo space rename dash user. The computer will then reboot and it will prompt you on the next boot to create a new username and password. One of the other new features that they've added to this update is Bluetooth keyboards at boot time. So if you want to use a Bluetooth keyboard or mouse with the Raspberry Pi, you've always needed to use a USB keyboard or a USB mouse to set it up. And that can be quite irritating. That requirement has now been removed in the new wizard. So when it runs, the first page will prompt you to connect a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse uh, and it'll wait until you've done so. There is also just one more new thing. You might have heard of Wayland. So Raspberry Pi have described this as Wayland is likely to be the future of the desktop for Linux. So Wayland is a proposed replacement for the X window system, which has underpinned Unix desktop environments for several decades now. Wayland has various advantages over X, most notably performance wise. It's still quite a new technology and there's still a lot under development. In fact, they don't recommend that you try this at all unless you're on an experimental system. If you do want to get it, simply type sudo apt install rpi Wayland and it will install on next boot. So there are some caveats. You can't do screen grabs, you can't do remote desktop, and there's quite a few other things that don't work with it too. But if you've got a spare Pi or a spare SD card, then you could try this out yourself. So how to get the latest update? It's very, very simple. Before you do that, make sure you back up your files before you upgrade and then simply type sudo apt update. And then after you've done that and it's updated all the repository, you can then do sudo apt full dash upgrade. So I'm over here on my Raspberry Pi and I'm gonna do the sudo apt update that's going to grab all the latest updates from the repository now i've run this a couple of minutes ago so it shouldn't take too long to run and then what we'd have to do next is sudo apt full dash upgrade it will then pull down all the packages and ask you do you want to install this so i'm going to press yes and then it's going to go away and install all those packages it'll take it some time to do that so we'll come back after it's finished okay so it looks like it's finished updating so i'm going to give this a reboot and let's see what happens next okay so it's finished rebooting so it said that what we need to do is we need to do the sudo rename user and let's see what happens now so it's preparing to run the wizard and then it says the wizard will be launched on the next reboot so let's press yes give that a reboot maybe this next reboot will be quite quicker so running this on a raspberry pi 400 incidentally you can see at the top there the name is uh, rpi 400 so here we are so interestingly i have connected over vnc i've not connected via hdmi and we can see there that it's asking me to type in username so i'm going to create a brand new username for the sake of this i'm going to type in kev and i'm going to type in a really complicated password and then type in another password it now says the pi user has been renamed to kev and the password has been set now i'm going to restart once again and it'll log me in with the kev user this time you can also see at the top of the screen there the bluetooth and the volume which is interesting this is this isn't the full desktop environment this is just a special environment just for boot so there we go it's now rebooting okay it's finished booting back up and we can now see it says either the username was not recognized or the password was incorrect and that's because we've changed it so what i now need to do on my vnc is just log in with the correct username and password so this time instead of logging as 
pi, I now need to log in as Kev. And now I can log in as, as normal. So I've got all my same files. It's just renamed the pi account to Kev. So I hope you found this short video interesting and I shall see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.